extremely well at a very high level. It's almost you know, like you're jealous, but uh, yeah. that you admire. So for me, I would say that kind of uh, creative uh, thing. Like I, I, I remember uh, once upon a time, I felt I didn't understand these um, uh, Leningrad structures in the Grunfeld. Yeah. And then you would watch Boris do it and you'd think, okay, uh, you know, I wish I could play it like that. But it's not enough to just study one or two games. Uh, can you learn? Somehow he has an... Yes, I believe that you can. Especially nowadays, uh, this is probably the most important thing. That uh, you sit with the positions that you're not very good at. And you uh, use the computer uh, to get better at it. Because uh, I think you can learn a lot. Uh, um, so. In a sense, I would say creativity for me is uh, is a subjective uh, thing. For me, whatever uh, what I find creative is what I do badly. Uh, watching others do well, what I do badly. When somebody does the same thing that I do well, maybe it's difficult for me to be as impressed yeah. because I can do it well uh, yeah. uh, as well. Um, but when uh, there is something you feel you can learn, then you feel uh, okay, that is really creative. Um, so it's more of a skills, not the, the actual creativity in the mind of some player like, I don't know, Morozevich, Shirov. Well, Morozevich, Shirov, uh, I would admire them as well, but in a, in a way like, I don't think I ever want to do this, yeah, sure. but uh, it's impressive that they can do it. So I don't know if that's the right way of putting it, but uh, uh, I always found uh, Morozevich and Shirov, well, a bit too unsound for my taste. I'm generally uh, much more, um, okay, to use a, um, an adjective, I would say classical, than, uh, than they are. Um, so yes, for me that is impressive. Um, Ivanchuk, in a position that you know very well, he'll suddenly play a move that you hadn't thought of and you think, uh, actually that is the definition of creative, that yes, uh, something exactly. which, um, no one has thought of uh, until now that suddenly you see that it's even possible. That's the first stage actually. First you must see that it's legal. Yeah. And then you see that uh, uh, it's even good in this situation. Um, but there are many, many kinds of creativity like this. Um, um, there are people who play in games very well and I've admired that a lot. Um, and you're right. Uh, but. but it's difficult for me to narrow it, narrow it down to one or two examples because there are really a lot. Uh, I mean, I'm sure that if you asked me to give you an answer in 10 minutes, I could come up with five examples. But if you told me to give you an answer tomorrow morning, I could come up with 40. You know, it's like that. You'd slowly you think, ah, yes, that one and that one and that one. So. No, I think um, you constantly learn from everyone you play with. And it doesn't even have to be a strong player. Even a player who um, does something original or creative and then blunders it and loses the game, you still think, well, but that part he played very well, let me see, let me just check. And in fact, as a chess player, you're very curious about that. Um, whenever you, you finish a game, even I've finished games in simuls, and then I go back and I think, that guy did that thing against me, it completely floored me. No, wait, I, now I need to spend a few minutes checking this. Okay. So. Um, it's quite a strong urge. It's not always connected to curiosity. It may be just that you didn't understand something or you forgot something, but we want to go back and make sense of it in the broader framework. Um, I didn't know what to do next. Yes, I didn't know what to do next. Uh, and I've forgotten what I need to do in this position. I need to put it into something that makes sense to me. Mm. And then only then you can uh, move on. It used to come to me more often. Uh, recently, I would say that um, uh, I don't think about chess as much as I used to. Maybe it's just that you come of a certain age or you've tired a little bit, but I don't, uh, uh, when I'm at airports and all, in fact, my mind wanders. And another, unless there was something very recent that happened that is still, uh, you know, it's got my attention and uh, you've got it from, over in your head. From the past, I mean, I from night, from... No, not so much. Um, more recent stuff. I think, you know, if something I'm worrying, wondering about this morning, I will continue to think of it at the airport. Okay. But uh, the stuff from 
20, 30 Can years ago. It? I don't think about it at all. Okay. In fact, uh, I remember the uh, events and the memories associated with the event, but not necessarily positions anymore. I think this is full of fa false positives, uh, in the sense that uh, there are days I've woken up and thought, today is going to be a good day, I'm just feeling great, and it has been a great day, and I, you come back thinking, well, of course, QED. But uh, there are as many days when I wake up and I think today feels really good, and you, you play a game, and you know, without making excuses, today was one of these days. I felt quite good in the morning. But then I played two games, and now you think, how is it possible? I didn't even know I was capable of such bad chess. I mean, you, you like to think there is some sort of floor below which you cannot sink. <laughs> and then you find that that floor doesn't exist. Um, and this happens to me quite often. Um, one of the things we strive for is to have these early warning signals. Mm -hmm. Um, it doesn't have to be before the game, it can be during the game. At a certain point, you find yourself thinking thoughts that, uh, well, you would call it unhealthy, but basically what they are is, in previous games, when you've started to have this, these thoughts, it's ended badly. Mm. So you, there's a negative correlation. You think, um, when I think this, or my, when my mind is wandering off to this other subject, or something like that, typically I play badly then. Mm -hmm. So what you try to tell yourself is, um, okay, I'm familiar with the situation, it's happened to me before, it's time to pull myself together and uh, try to get into a healthier frame of mind. Sometimes it's enough, sometimes you, you snap back. But nowadays I find that quite often um, when I'm at my worst, I have no sign of it coming. Mm. I will play, uh, I play games that uh, Afterwards, you think, my moves are so illogical mm -hmm. that something went horribly wrong in my head. But if I could figure out what it is, then I would be a better player. Uh, I mean, sometimes it's almost like a study. Mm -hmm. You have to play perfectly to lose this position because it's impossible to lose it. Mm -hmm. And then you play perfectly. And the thing is, while you're playing it, every move of yours makes sense in a certain sequence. Um, but then you realize afterwards that it's a total breakdown in your brain, that the entire sequence you got wrong. Uh, you made a move thinking it was your best choice under the circumstances. Then sometimes a minute later you realize it, it isn't, mm -hmm. and sometimes you don't. But uh, for me, it would be very nice if I had some way to find this, uh, um, this signal. You know, if I yeah. could, if I could anticipate it, then it'd be, it would be, it would be, yeah, that would be very big uh, help for me, because if you can anticipate it, then uh, the next time, you, if you see it coming, you'll know. Okay, it's time to do this or do that. But these days, I'm just floored when uh, I'm playing badly. Mm -hmm. um, I cannot explain how I can play that badly for four, five. But there's a breakdown in logic where uh, you sometimes see a very complicated problem. And then you come up with a very elegant solution to that problem, and you miss something that's right in front of you. Mm. Um, how to avoid that is a harder question because, um, I mean, there are times when I try to work on this problem, but I've concluded that um, when your brain is your enemy, then you can't fool it, you can't yeah. bring it back. Um, the better thing is to work on is to work on what goes well and try to maximize that rather than. Mm. Uh, try to stop failure because, I mean, like today, um, you can't tell why suddenly this happens, but it just happens and uh, and when it starts, it, you can't stop it even. You can't stop it, huh? Apparently, I'm not able to. <laughs> okay. um, so, but this is a complicated subject because um, I can give you many examples where I have done something about it and I have fixed the problem, but it never fully goes away. You know the expression, old wine in a new bottle? Yeah. Uh, for me, um, my collapses keep on reoccurring in in new forms that I don't even recognize. So, so it stays this 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 your how your brain reacts to different situations stays a little bit a mystery to, to, to you. During. Yes, I I feel that see when you're young, a couple of failures you just brush it off and you play the next event and you think it'll go better and it does go better. 
Um, let's say this is proving harder to do these days, but um, it was the same uh, 20 years back. Um, I d did not know in advance how I was going to uh, when I was going to play badly. If I knew that, you can it'll change so much about what you do. But yeah, uh, sure. I, I haven't figured that one out. Yes, experience is one of the main things you can draw on. Um, I think it's very nice when um, uh, you remember something and you think this is how it worked. And not only at a technical level, but also at a psychological level, uh, at an emotional level. If you can is remember what works and you can isolate mm. it, then it will improve your results. Um, I often see things that um, youngsters do that I think, okay, that's a mistake. Uh, yeah. I see it, but you have to keep a you have to keep a fresh mind. Sometimes they do things better than you. One of the worst mistakes is to think that because you had a, you had a problem you couldn't solve, that nobody can solve it. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is a big mistake you can make because quite often uh, these days, and again, this is one of the areas computers uh, change everything because they rewrite the script. You, um, well, there might be positions that are just simply impossible for you to play, uh, things that you thought were solved um, and then people come up with uh, new ways of doing that and then suddenly uh, it opens your mind to what is possible in chess. Mm. Um, and this, um, I think if you ever lose this feeling, then you're over. Mm -hmm. You must always be willing to learn something new. So, um, I think um, youngsters also do things that I thought, oh, he's making a mistake because if he does this, he's going to end up in this. And, and sometimes they surprise you. Sometimes they do it better than you and you think, oh, wow. Apparently, it's not, the, uh, it's not that it was impossible, it's just I couldn't do it. So you also have to balance it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they make mistakes, but sometimes it's just their way of doing things. But you, you see more and more that every player's personality is very important uh, um, in the way he approaches a problem. Because um, what uh, doesn't work for you may well work for them. So it's not the same thing psychologically. Yes, um, like every generation, my generation built on what the previous generation was uh, playing and then uh, the same procedure yeah. occurs, um, you know, the same pattern repeats. Um, also stylistically, they're all, uh, it's almost like they're mirroring us a bit. Um, if you look at um, um, Carlson and uh, Caruana and um, Maxime and uh, Nakamura, then I'm sure you can pair each one with a player from the past and it will sort mm -hmm. of match. Um, and again, you can see also how people evolve. Um, Hikaru used to play quite differently from what he does now. Mm -hmm. I think now... Um, he tries to be more classical than he used to be, and sound, before he was yeah. really much more on sound. Uh, but it worked for him because, uh, you know, it suited his style and his mm -hmm. nature. And that's the thing, how do you learn something new um, um, without spoiling what, what used to work? Um, I think Caruana is someone who's uh, just an incredibly hard worker. Um, Maybe in this sense, he reminds me of Boris, for instance, mm -hmm. um, or maybe Vladi. Um, I'm not sure who resembles me exactly. I mean, I, I have this slightly unsound uh, part of me, mm -hmm. but at some point I also tried to uh, uh, learn the Soviet school of chess's methods, yeah. you know, this uh, systematic study and so on. So, of course, I was wild till I was 20 or 21. Then once I started playing the matches, I think, my style evolved here a lot. I became aesthetically very conservative. Mm -hmm. um, because of the matches? Yes, Most and because in general, you play top tournaments, you play matches, and you start to become so-called sound, which means yeah. you don't do a lot, of, you stop doing a lot of things. Um, I think over time, it's probably done more for me than, uh, you know, done me more good than bad, but, uh, Clearly, uh, later on and nowadays, I find it very hard to do unsound things because I mentally train myself to stop doing yeah. it. And it's difficult for me to break out of this also. Here's some nostalgia a little bit, yeah? Yes. Uh, quite often, um, I look at people who do unsound things and I think, it's a pity I, I don't really have this anymore. Mm 
Um, I wonder if I could get it back. And then you think, uh, uh, but again, you know, we, we always face the same problems, but there is never, never entirely in the same way. Um, so nowadays, there are things um, you want to relearn, but you have to respect that now um, our understanding of positions has changed, computers have changed a lot. Uh, you have to use new methods to learn old stuff. Well, um, at the beginning I took to it like a fish to water because uh, it, it filled the biggest gaps in my uh, chess. My biggest gap in those days was uh, chess knowledge. It simply wasn't drilled into me in the same way. I had enough, but I had this very casual, I would pick up a book, read it, close it, then two days later pick up the same book again, read it again. There was nothing very organized or systematic about it. Um, and then suddenly databases came along mm. and it made it so easy for me to have access to all the latest tournaments and it simplified life a lot in the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say the first five, ten years, I, I took to it like a fish to water. Uh, I mainly benefited from it. Mm. But uh, that is also because I was at that perfect age where you're not resistant to new knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, there is nothing you have an emotional attachment to and therefore you're unwilling to forget. Mm. Uh, and you, you absorb new knowledge effortlessly. Um, so if we look at modern um, computers and what they show, I find the modern generation is the least resistant. They're the ones who, for whom it doesn't contradict a lifetime of learning. Yeah. So at the beginning, I would say it's a huge help, but of course, uh, com the computer revolution, uh, revolution didn't stop. It continued and it picked up speed. And so there are periods when I found that uh, I couldn't keep up, I found it uh, hard to adjust. Um, and I've brought up this topic of learning and relearning because it's very important. Um, first of all, you know that we can almost forget everything Steinitz told us. Not forget in its entirety, but there are so many details that, yeah. uh, and so many nuances that you cannot just say um, over piece once and this and that. Those rules don't make sense anymore. But even the rules that I thought I grew up with, uh, uh, suddenly, I mean, they're responsible to be too dogmatic in chess. And um, um, there are no, there, there are no longer, I think, this concept of just the best moves or. Uh, there are all sorts of moves and each one has a stylistic component, not a, they're not right or wrong, they're stylistic and uh, it's the sequence that can be right or wrong. So if you, you can play what we used to consider a bad move, but if you then uh, are tactically very accurate, then it's, it works. Mm -hmm. And probably that's the biggest difference between the youngest generation, younger generation and me nowadays is that I think they suffer less. Mm -hmm. they, also, uh, they also find it difficult. Uh, yeah. So I shouldn't, shouldn't exaggerate, but uh, I think they suffer less. Um, whereas for our generation, very often we get into a position where we think this must be good. And it's, uh, it's quite a shock when you go back home and you check it and you realize that it isn't good. And then there is actually quite some learning in uh, sitting and checking it slowly and realizing why it isn't good. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's tough.